Hey guys, Detector Ben here. Uh, today I'm out at one of my uh, local parks here, a place that I've been hunting for years. Uh, I wanted to do something a little different today. I want to go over my top five uh, spots to find silver coins in parks. Uh, obviously this is based on, you know, my experience and it's just my opinion. You know, take it for what it's worth. These things are going to vary from location to location and and uh, different uh, cities and areas but for me in my parks these are the spots that have produced the most silver for me you know I've personally found probably over 30 silvers in this park in the last few years in these spots even though this park has been you know pounded since probably the 70s one of the biggest uh, and oldest parks in our city so it's been hit a lot I'll, I'll often run into two or three other detectorists here uh, when I'm here detecting but uh, so that's what we're gonna do today and hopefully uh, you guys will find this helpful all right so at number five I'm going to say uh, picnic areas picnic shelters uh, you can probably see in the background behind me there's some picnic tables uh, this would also include uh, you know covered picnic shelters pavilions um, and one thing to keep in mind is that uh, you need to also look for maybe areas where there used to be pavilions or picnic areas. Uh, look at old photos, you know, old aerial photos, old photos just you know on the internet, whatever. Find areas where uh, picnic areas, where tables were, um, or where there used to be a pavilion or a shelter. These areas are going to be pretty trashy, so a lot of times you want to use a smaller coil, but. Um, especially if it's a current picnic shelter that's been there for a long time there's gonna be a lot of trash but uh, if you can sift through that trash you're likely to find some good stuff left over um, so yeah that's spot number five okay uh, spot number four on my list is going to be playgrounds you can see the playground behind me there um, that's a newer playground obviously if it's an old playground where you can tell the equipment is you know from at least the 50s or 60s then you might find some good stuff actually in the sand or in the playground but most playgrounds have been updated so you know you're not gonna find old silver coins generally in the playground or right around the equipment but around the outside of the equipment area in the grassy area that's that's been a real hot spot for me um, another thing to consider like I mentioned earlier with the shelters and the picnic areas is you need to look for where there might have been previous playgrounds. A lot of times the playgrounds have been moved um, or there was multiple playground equipment areas and one of them has been removed, something like that. So look for uh, current playgrounds and also old playgrounds and search around those. All right, that's spot number four. All right, guys, so spot number three is going to be hills. If you see this, little hill here um, the, the there's two spots on hills that are that have proven to be really good for me and productive uh, the top edge of the hill if there's a, a a very edge a defined edge or top area of the hill you know generally people will sit on those uh, they might sit on top of the hill and look out over an area like this maybe where their kids are playing or in this case there used to be a playground here uh, so people would probably sit on this hill and watch their kids on the playground. So I found a lot of good stuff. I found a, uh, a seated dime right up there on this hill. Um, probably from someone sitting there, you know, maybe picnicking or watching their kids or whatever. Uh, so the top edge of the hill is always good. Um, could also be from maybe sledding if it's a big enough hill. You know, people load on and off the sleds there. They might, stuff might fall out of their pockets. Um, and then also the bottom edge of the hill like if you look here you kind of see like a spot where it hits the ground uh, kind of a you know a little curved area there at the bottom I found that I find a lot of coins in that little area there it could be you know for whatever reason maybe people drop coins when they're coming down the hill maybe they slip and fall stuff falls out of their pocket it rolls down into that area at the bottom of the hill or maybe like I said earlier from sledding you know that's where they end maybe they fall off the sled whatever unload from the sled but 
the bottom edge and the top edge of the hills uh, has been pretty productive for me. All right, guys, spot number two. This, is, this may seem like a fairly obvious one, uh, but from what I remember when I started metal detecting, um, I didn't think a lot of this stuff. As, as a seasoned detectorist now, you know, these things seem obvious to me, but spot number two is gonna be around trees. Um, obviously, you've got current trees, especially, uh, you know, the bigger the better. That means they're, generally means they're old. Uh, and if you know a lot about trees, you may, may be able to, you know, determine uh, the age of a tree by the size and you know what type of tree it is but older the tree the better people like to obviously sit up against trees uh, they might have you know sat up there to just find a shady spot on a hot day stuff falls out of their pocket maybe they had a picnic uh, you know under the shade of the tree so it doesn't have to be right next to the tree although I do find a lot of coins right near the roots at the edge of the tree at the base of the tree but uh, you know also just in the shady areas around the tree another thing to keep in mind is if you see this brown spot right here there's kind of an indent there that's a spot where a tree used to be so those can be really good spots because a they might have dug the tree stump out and turned up some coins that were under there and b it may not have been hunted as hard because other detectorists might have missed it not realizing there was a tree there um, so those are really good spots in and around those indents. You could also find uh, where trees were, you know, from old photos, uh, aerial photos, or just old photos of the park. You might notice a big tree that's in a picture that's not there now, and if you can find that location, you know, it, it should produce something for you. So spot number two uh, on my list, one of the best spots over the years at all the parks I've been to has been under and around trees current and former all right guys time for the number one spot this has been the most productive area for me in all the parks i hunt uh, and that is going to be sidewalks in and around sidewalks there's a lot of areas around a sidewalk it could be the very edge um, and that's going to be you know an area where anytime someone drops something on a sidewalk it just rolls off the edge and so you get a collection of a lot of coins there it's also going to be very trashy so generally again you know small smaller coils are going to be a little more effective around sidewalks um, and generally you know you can look at an area at least five feet out from a sidewalk and find that it's pretty productive because as you can imagine if someone's running or riding a bike or whatever if they drop something it might bounce off the sidewalk and fly you know several feet in roll in whatever so cover that area really well hit it from multiple directions multiple angles you know maybe even multiple coils also keep in mind you can keep an eye out for sidewalk tear outs they may be you know maybe someday they'll be replacing this section of the sidewalk because it's all cracked and busted up if you can get there in time after they've pulled the cement up you might be able to find some really good stuff under the sidewalks sidewalk tear outs anywhere are great but especially in a park um, another thing to keep in mind again look for former places where there used to be sidewalks uh, maybe maybe it was just a gravel path that they used, you know 100 years ago and you you notice it on an old photo or a map and it's no longer there um, that could be a great spot Oftentimes the old sidewalk path is under the current sidewalk, obviously, which is why the tear outs can be great. Um, but look for old paths, walking past sidewalks. Doesn't have to be an official sidewalk. It could just be a, an area that you've noticed that there's a lot of traffic through. Um, so that's, num that's the number one spot, guys. That's probably where I found the most silver over the years at, at all the parks, especially this one, in and around sidewalks. So I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the top five spots. I hope, you know, maybe some of these are new ideas for you, especially if you're new to metal detecting. Uh, hopefully this is helpful to you and you can, you know, really, really focus on those spots. Obviously, keep in mind anywhere in a park can be good. Um, you know, those are just areas that I, I maybe tend to start at and really grid out in multiple directions or focus on. But you know, anywhere in a park could be a good area. Just keep in mind where the traffic is currently, 
if it's a high traffic area now it likely was you know 100 years ago 200 years ago as well so that's something to keep in mind but also just remember the parks change a lot and maybe a high traffic area now didn't used to be so you know utilizing old photos um, speaking to older local residents you might find that there used to be a picnic area or a pond or a meeting area somewhere else in the park that's just you know off off on the edge or an area that nobody really hangs out in now so keep that in mind those those old high traffic areas could be you know lost in in time and nobody knows not a lot of people know about them so keep that in mind also you know wide open areas where there's no trees and there's just nothing there some people might overlook those thinking there's no traffic there you know there's probably nothing there but keep in mind that you know large open areas could be used for sports uh, they could be used for fairs or carnivals or some sort of meetings you know groups events so an open area can be good too you know if you if you start gridding an open area and you start finding lots of trash or, or older time period pieces then you know that's probably an area where people have gathered in the past so you know really you want to you want to check out all areas of a park but hopefully these top five spots will be good areas to focus for you and hopefully you'll have uh, as much luck as i did in those areas so again i hope this was helpful hope you guys enjoyed it feel free to uh, comment let me know what you think of the video and also let me know if you have any questions uh, i'd love to answer any questions the best i can um, but yeah hope you enjoyed the video thanks again for watching and uh, stay tuned i'll have some some more good hunts coming up soon thanks a lot guys all right guys Here's a great example for the sidewalks. This is a sidewalk that's been pounded a million times. Uh, and I just came back over it with the small coil. And look at this, about an inch, inch or two down right next to the sidewalk. There's a silver rim right there. Using the six inch coil. I'm gonna assume this is just a rosy being that shallow, but. That looks like a Merc, actually. Let's see if I can get my camera to stay there. Put the water on it. D mint work on it. Looks like uh, 19. 1940, 1940 Merc, about maybe two inches down next to the sidewalk. Man, that's just crazy. I've been hunting this park forever, but that's a, that's a great example of a target right next to the sidewalk. So.